Right. Thanks very much, Craig. It's great to be here. Um, as Craig said, I'm Steve Starling. I've been a fishing writer for, for many, many years and um, was on telly for a while there through the 90s with, uh, with Rex Hunt. Some of you might be old enough to remember that. Um, I've, I've got this, so I'll start it when, when I'm ready. Um, yeah, I just wanted to have a bit of a talk to you about my experiences with native fish, uh, inland native fish, and, and give you a little bit of history as well. I mean, obviously, uh, our major inland native species were really, really important uh, to the indigenous inhabitants of this country a long, long time before we arrived here. Uh, they played a, an enormous part in their culture uh, and their folklore. Uh, there are all kinds of creation legends tied up with, uh, with native fish. There's um, one of the important stories about the creation of the Murray River uh, involved a... Um, a famous indigenous hunter chasing this massive fish down a little narrow creek and uh, as the story tells it, the thrashing of the fish's tail widened the creek into a river and created the bends that we characterise and know uh, along the Murray River these days. So they were very, very important to them. They were obviously also very important to them as a food source as well but they were celebrated in their art and in their folklore and in their culture. They had very different names for the fish. I mean, the fish that um, we rather inappropriately ended up calling cod, which is just something we brought over from the old world, they were variously known in different parts of the country as gudu and pondi and pond. They had different names in, in different places. Uh, the Camilleroy people up to the north of here called yellow belly thage. Uh, down in South Australia, in parts of South Australia, they were no, yellow belly were known as callop, and interestingly, that that name's survived down there, and it's still used by a lot of uh, European people in South Australia to describe golden perch. So, enormously important. Now, when the first naturalists uh, and explorers and settlers started to to move into inland Australia, they described uh, a lot of the fishing practices that were being used uh, by the indigenous people at the time. And they also described the fish and the fauna of the river. And it was quite interesting that the very first Murray cod that was ever scientifically described in Australia, which came from the Macquarie River, not too far from here, actually turned out to be a trout cod. And it took years and years for that confusion to get sorted out and for proper scientific descriptions to be made of the trout cod and the Murray cod separating the two. Those early settlers described enormous numbers of native fish uh, in our inland rivers. And it, of course, this was before carp and before uh, polluted runoff and before irrigation extraction and thermal pollution and all of the other things that have impacted on native fish. So there were enormous numbers of native fish. And the settlers took advantage of them, obviously. They fed themselves. They also fed their stock and their crops. There's lots of reports of actually using native fish to feed pigs and ploughing them into the fields uh, to fertilise their crops. That's how prolific the native fish were. Um, angling methods were pretty basic in those days, cord, cord lines and uh, mostly though nets and, and traps and, and cross lines and set lines. Uh, what recreational fishing did happen in those days was, was also pretty basic. So it was, a it was times of plenty, but even by the first couple of decades of the 20th century, roads and cars that allowed people to get into all these areas, and there was a lot of fish being pulled out. There was a big commercial fishery uh, for Murray Cod and Yellow Belly through much of the Murray-Darling Basin, mostly to supply the Sydney and Melbourne markets, but also local markets as well. And as, as early as 1929, there were articles appearing in newspapers talking about dramatic declines in the, in the numbers of these native fish because so many were being pulled out. Now, I mentioned recreational fishing. Recreational fishing in those days was a bit of a meat harvesting exercise as well. But when the rivers ran clear, which they did a lot more often in those days, they'd pull an a, a, a aeroplane spinner on a cord hand line behind a rowboat usually and catch plenty of fish. And some of the more adventurous and forward-thinking anglers started playing with lures, both Australian-made lures uh, and imported lures, casting and trolling. And the whole recreational thing started to, to get a bit of momentum. There were a lot of articles uh, coming out in fishing and outdoor magazines talking about some of the techniques uh, 
and promoting uh, our inland natives as a really worthwhile target. And it was the beginning of a slow revolution. That was me in uh, 1979, 80, moved to Burke <laughs> as a, uh, as a wet, very wet behind the ears school teacher. Uh, when I arrived out there, um, unfortunately, I picked a bad time to arrive because I arrived about two or three years after the carp. And it, the interesting thing about Murray Cod uh, fishing in particular in that part of the world in those days was that Anglers didn't describe cod as being this big, they described them as being this big because they were usually hanging up on a meat hook in someone's cooler or chiller room or whatever. And that's where I saw my first couple of cod hanging up next to hindquarters of beef and lamb uh, in cool rooms. But it was all about carp when I was there. It was very hard to catch anything other than carp. And for that reason, I ended up doing a lot more shooting than fishing in those days because the fishing was actually quite depressing. You would catch dozens or even hundreds of carp in between each small cod or yellow belly or silver perch uh, that came along. So you can probably understand that I'm a big fan of the introduction of the carp virus. I, unfortunately, we were going to have a talk about that tonight, but um, that, uh, that has been pulled from the agenda, unfortunately. But I think it's something that we all do need to, to talk about. But that's what I mostly ended up doing, shooting. And uh, when I was fishing, it was catching carp, killing them and burying them on the, on the riverbank. So, didn't catch a lot of uh, native fish uh, in those days when I was out on the Darling. Interestingly, my fishing for cod and yellowbelly got better when I moved back to the coast because I was then able to make inland trips to particularly some of the impoundments. Mulwhaler and Burrenjuk were some of the, the early impoundments that I fished, although the big, carp or, or the big cod always eluded me. Uh, I, I caught plenty of nice size smaller cod and had some great trips up to beautiful water in the, in the New England uh, area towards the headwaters of the Murray-Darling system. Had some red letter days up there and caught lots and lots of cod on spinnerbaits and bait casters. But do you think I could catch a big one? I just couldn't score a big one. In fact, it was only four or five years ago, might be five or six years ago now, that I caught my first cod over a metre in length. And that was while fishing from a kayak down on the Murray River between uh, Renmark and Mildura casting a spinnerbait, I was finally able to, to crack the metre mark and I've only managed to do it a couple more times since, but they're very, very special fish. You never forget catching and releasing one of those big Murray cod. Um, I also became quite addicted to chasing big yellow belly, particularly um, in Windermere Dam on the, on the Macquarie system. And I've, I started fishing there in 1989 and have been there every year since. And I absolutely love chasing big goldens uh, on quite light gear. Um, and like a lot of other anglers, I'm, I'm just really, really keen on my freshwater fishing for big natives there. Never easy. They're always a challenging target. But uh, the dams have been, been good to us. And they've been a bit of a, a bright light, I guess, um, as far as native fish go in the, in the last couple of decades. But of course, Stocked fish in dams will never replace wild fish in stretches of river like that. That's a bit of the Murrumbidgee uh, downstream from Wagga. And that's, that's the home waters of these fish that we're talking about, the Murray Cod and the Yellow Belly. And the fish in those rivers are so important. I like to think that I've lived through a bit of a renaissance in fishing for inland native fish. They probably, their numbers probably hit their lowest points during the early part of my life. And then they started to recover because we were looking after the waterways better and we were looking after the fish better and not killing as many. And the numbers definitely built up. Now, of course, they're facing all sorts of new challenges as epitomised by the fish kills, that we, the, the terrible fish kills that we've seen in the last couple of years driven by the drought and various other causes. And they're under a lot of pressure again now. But the neat thing is that They've gone from being seen as a, a, a source of protein or fertiliser or pig food or whatever to really highly revered sport fish. And I've seen so much change in the, in the fishing for native fish in my time doing it. You know, it's now all about braided line and graphite rods and bait casters and we're throwing big swim baits and wake baits for the Murray Cod. The yellow belly, it's almost the opposite end of the spectrum. We've gone to really light stuff. We're finessing them on brim gear and little vibes and things like that. It's real cutting edge fishing and it's thinking fishing. And I absolutely love it, as do a lot of other uh, Australian anglers, obviously. It's become, uh, it has become one of the 
most exciting parts of, of the Australian sport fishing movement, I think, in, in recent years is chasing these, uh, the two big natives in particular, the Murray Cod and the Yellow Belly. But as we're going to learn tonight, they are facing new challenges. Uh, it's not so much about over-harvesting anymore, it's about environmental challenges, about changes to the climate, changes to the river flows uh, that's really impacting on the fish now. And I think we all, as anglers and people who care about inland native fish, we need to start really prioritising the survival of those native fish when we make decisions about the rivers. Because if we don't do that, I don't think future generations are going to look very kindly on us at all. And they're certainly not going to be able to enjoy the things that we've enjoyed. Thank you very much.